we are walking to the park and I'm gonna turn this good old camera around as soon as I can there we go all right <clears throat> Oh. Welcome, welcome to Panama. Y'all, that bird is smashing that french fry. Oh, nope, he put it down. You gonna pick it back up? Yeah, he did pick it back up. Anyway, hey y'all, welcome to Panama. Babe, can we switch? <clears throat> welcome to Panama, y'all. Go ahead and let me know where y'all are joining in from. Let me know what part of the world you're in. Rep your city, rep your state, rep your country. Let me see who we got in the house right now. We got, oh, excuse me. East Coast, West Coast. Who is in the house? Oh, feel cool right there. Is that AC? I am in Panama. And it is 5.36 p.m. It is. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Straight? Okay. My husband is behind me giving directions. Arizona. Okay, we got West Coast in the house. Who else? We got some East Coast or no? Oh, dale. <laughs> um... Let me know who else we got in the house. I am these Panamanian streets with my husband and we are walking to a park that is actually a pretty popular park here in Panama. Yeah, it was like really hot today. Like it's been hot here. Because it's rainy, which don't get me wrong. Thank y'all for the hearts. I am not saying that 90 degrees is not hot. However, when we were in Thailand, it was like 103 degrees. So turning, oh, we were in Thailand. It was like 103 degrees. So the high being 90 degrees in Panama does not seem that bad. Oh, look at that dope ass art. Um, thank y'all so much for all the hearts. Um, after being in Thailand and it being like 103 degrees, 90 degrees don't really seem that bad, to be honest with you. Panama, actually, baby, you get a photo of that? That's so cool. Panama actually has a lot of, Panama City, I should say, has a lot of really dope street art. But um, keep letting me know where y'all are joining in from. Let me know what part of the world y'all are in. Let me know what time it is. Like I said, it's 5.38 p.m. here in Panama. I appreciate the hearts. I'm on here letting y'all hear out of breath and shit as we walking up this slight incline and shit so <laughs> let me know where y'all are joining in from my husband and i left the united states back in february and we have been gallivanting the globe this year we are currently in our eighth country so it's been a lot going on hello kitty goodbye kitty um yeah it's been a lot happening um like i said eighth country oh two kitties one cat, two cat. This y'all little spot right here? Little behind the rail act. Three cats. God damn. All right. This is the kitty spot. I'm here for it. Hey, Jersey. Okay. Did you go to Portugal? Nah. The only place in Europe we have been to. Thank y'all for the hearts. The only place in Europe we've been to this year is, um, there's that place, baby, the top. Straight. Yeah, the only place don't, we've been to is. Don't do that whole. When I say go, we go. Don't do what that. What's she talking about? Oh my God, Melvin. The only place we've been to this year in Europe is Spain. And that was just for a long layover. So this year we were really more focused on Asia, Africa, and um, Latin America. How was the language barrier here in Panama? Um, you know, so in Panama they speak Spanish, and I speak Spanish, but I will say that. Um, I've probably been to at least like eight Spanish-speaking countries, and I would say Panama and Chile are the hardest in terms of like the actual Spanish, just in terms of like 
how different it is and um like how easy it's been to communicate with other people so you know just like when you go to different places in the u.s you know you might hear like a different accent people use like different words you know like for example you might hear somebody up north say like pop versus in the south we say soda right that's kind of like a lame example but something like that so you know spanish isn't the same in um it doesn't sound the same in every country so that has been interesting but overall there hasn't really been a big language barrier because i know spanish this is the first country that we've been to well, other than spain this is the first country that we've been here uh, that we've been to this year where um i actually speak the language but in the other countries honestly other than china the language barrier really hasn't been a big deal because people speak english all over the world and you know you have google translate you have your body language you can point at things so i think a language barrier a lot of times is not as challenging as people think it is and there are a lot of factors that go into that as well no they say pop in the midwest okay look listen hold me accountable i'm from the south i don't know we say soda do y'all say pecan or pecan <laughs> this is the main question this is what's going to separate the real from the fakes is it pecan or is it pecan <laughs> oh my god okay new jersey i want to do this someday kari what's stopping you no not no not melvin huh my husband's name is um my husband's name is melvin and he's like just getting on me out here because he be crossing the street acting crazy but wait a minute what is p-c-a-n y'all gotta put like p-e-e -E can like ew like urine can ew or pecan which is like p-u-h-c-o-n <laughs> You can't just spell it out. It's pecan. We say soda in the east. You said cross? Okay. Hubby over here with the with the Google Maps, y'all. He keeping us honest. My daughter will graduate in 2026 and I can do what I want, period. Pecan. Pecan is ghetto. You know what? You probably say ant instead of aunt. An ant is an insect. It's not a person. <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all all language is beautiful um sir can you relax all this honking you doing and shit fuck it up if it's your birthday i don't know why the song is in my head it ain't nobody's birthday well it's somebody's birthday but ain't nobody's birthday that i know but yeah um we say aunt not aunt i know i definitely say aunt <laughs> white folks say aunt i'm not about to fuck with you johnny i'm not even going here with you um there gotta be some white people out there to say aunt um oh that's cool i don't know what that is is that a museum baby i don't know what that is but anyway yeah um the language barrier hasn't been that challenging it was a little crazy in china i ain't gonna lie it was a little it was a little hairy there china was the first place where China was the first country where it just kind of seemed like, like it, it, it felt like, and I'm saying China, I'm saying the country, but obviously, I mean, the area that we were in in China, right? We didn't cover all of China. We were only there for a long layover, but that was the first um, country we went to where the language barrier was really challenging. Like it was actually really, it like, it, it took so long just for us to get to our hotel from the airport. And we are used to, you know, most people in hospitality speaking some English, like, you know, hotels, um, airports, etc. So that was kind of like a little slap in the face in China. But we made it. You know what? That's all that matters is that we made it. But what travel questions do y'all have? Panama is my 28th country. Um, like I said, this year we've been to eight. So a lot of countries were visited this year and last year i went to oh okay sir fuck me then right okay nigga what i'm not going oh you see you got me on here use a foul language oh by the way don't be coming to these other countries don't be coming to these other countries thinking these cars don't hit, won't hit you because that whole pedestrians always have the right of way baby you better <laughs> You better not come here with that mentality because your ass will get hit. Favorite place. Um, BD Princess, do you mean favorite place this year or favorite place in general? My favorite country in general is Mexico. Favorite country we've been to 
so far this year, definitely Thailand. And we're also trying not to go back at the same time. <laughs> Do you stay in Airbnbs? For the most part, yeah. This is actually, we've been in Airbnbs and hotels. This is actually, look, more cool street art over there. This is actually, the place we're staying at now is the first time that we rented. Yes, love Mexico. Um, this is the first time that we rented like privately. So we actually are the apartment we're in now. It's like a two bedroom, two and a half bath. Um, it's dope. It's on the 31st floor, beautiful views all around. And um, we are renting from an expat who lives here, which really just happened by chance. We were definitely looking on Airbnb and then whenever I was, oh God. So like normally whenever I'm gonna travel somewhere, I always look up like black expat groups and um, and there's a lot of black expats in Panama. And um, whenever, yes, a lot of them are retiring. Let me put that out there. <laughs> and so I was in a group and I was like, Um, and then she DM'd me and told me she had a place. So yeah, this look dirty. I mean, it's a city. Like if you go to New York, <laughs> New York City, the streets are gonna also look dirty there. Like, and you know what's really interesting, y'all? Because um, suburbs <laughs> and um. It's funny because I remember the first time I went to New York, that was actually my first time ever visiting a city. Y'all, I could not, but I couldn't believe my eyes. Like I could not believe like, like just like trash and shit on the ground. Like that was just not really something that I saw. Cause I had, I, I never really, I was, I've never been a city person. And now that I've been to several cities, obviously I'm in one now, you know, I mean, obviously in the, even in the U S and Pretty much all the places we've been to this year, I would say maybe except Bali. Everywhere's pretty much been in the city, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Thailand, Japan, yeah, everywhere's been. Japan is probably the cleanest city we've been to, right? The top of the world, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I feel like um, Japan's probably the cleanest place that we've been, but I'm, I'm more used to it now. Like, I mean, like I say, whether I was in, like, even when I was in Paris, um, I mean, it's just, like I said, cities are, they just, yeah, they be getting dirty. Lord. Um, Panama is cool, a little expensive for a foreign country. I agree. Um, I talked about that. So I do like a living abroad series, like giving kind of updates on the journey. And I have, I do have some videos on that. So, cause our original plan was to stay here for two months and then we got here. And we were like, baby, is that umami? Wow. We actually ate there the other night. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, um, I lost my train of thought. What the hell? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whenever we first got here, we were kind of shocked at how expensive things were here in Panama. There's definitely some, um, some things that are like very comparable to U.S., prices and you know i'll be honest we are also kind of biased even though we try not to be because we spent so many months in southeast asia so for so long you know we out here paying like two three dollars five dollars for meals and then you know coming to panama i mean we did go to the states to visit but you know we were expecting the states to be expensive because it was expensive whenever we left so um yeah, it's definitely more expensive than we anticipated, but it's kind of hit or miss. Like there are some, there are some um, things that you can still get cheap. You just kind of have to know where to go. Because I feel like whenever you are somewhere like Thailand or Vietnam, you can kind of go anywhere. I would say like 90% of the places you go are going to be fairly cheap versus places like Panama, where I feel like you really have to know where to go. Yes, it is. Southeast Asia. is amazing it's just really fucking far from the united states it's not like i mean it took us less than five hours to get here from the states and 
it technically was not kelly thank you for sharing the live and thank y'all so much for the hearts um so yeah like i mean it took us less than five hours to get here it technically was not a direct flight we technically were supposed to fly to columbia <laughs> but we just stayed in the layover because we were like we went on a direct flight but um yeah like southeast asia is phenomenal it's just a matter of you know you're gonna be really really far from you're gonna be really far from home so my bad y'all i'm like switching hands with the phone and that's why it looks like it's like wagging around and stuff what else what other travel questions y'all got for me welcome y'all who are just now joining welcome to i was about to say welcome to tiktok where am i at welcome to panama um oh me and my husband have been in panama for it was actually four weeks yesterday like time goes by so so quickly and i believe we've already been here for four weeks but we have so um excuse me a lot of the places we've been to this year we were there for quite some time we are really embracing slow travel i highly highly recommend slow travel for many reasons you just in slow travel meaning just you know staying in one place longer so you can have the time to really get to know a place get to know a culture have some favorites oh yes what i was saying earlier like they earlier i there was a meal matter of fact i'm about to this that i ate here and i'm gonna let you tell me how much what you think it was As soon as I figure this out. Okay. All right. This is what I had for lunch today. All of this. And how much do y'all think this meal cost me today here in Panama City? Thank y'all so much for the hearts. Baby, we need to eat some Mexican food now. Low, low ahead. Go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know how much y'all think this meal cost me today. Hold on, let my other photo back up. Oh my God, I'm hot. Uh, bear with me, y'all. I gotta take a screenshot of this again because it's too far for me to find. There it is. Twelve dollars, five dollars, fifteen, five dollars, four dollars and fifty cent. That's what that meal cost me today. So, like I said, um, thank y'all again for the hearts. Please keep double tapping the screen. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stay consistent with this live challenge. I'm trying to go live thirty days in a row so TikTok will push me out to the FYP again. Um, but yeah. Four dollars and fifty cents. So that's what I mean whenever I say it's hit or miss. Now, there was a place we actually walked by earlier. There was a place that me and my husband ate at. Um, we're in the hood. No, this is not the hood. This area is actually considered more of like the family part. I mean, you see all like the dogs and stuff. Like a lot of families and expats live in this area. It's called the San Francisco area. The part that's a little bit more hood is on another side of Panama City, near an area called Casco Viejo. We actually really like it over there. We actually we prefer that area because there's a lot more fun stuff over there i feel like there's not like as much um like there is stuff over here but i feel like it's just it's not as easy to find like if you come to panama city you will notice that a lot of the like excursions and a lot of the stuff you sign up for is going to be in an area called casco viejo so yeah did you eat in the hood today no the place i ate at was like a five minute walk from my apartment which really surprised me because i'm not gonna lie to y'all like the first two weeks that me and my husband were here we kind of rode off panama like we were like it's too expensive it's kind of boring and then my sister and um some friends came here a couple weeks ago to celebrate my friend's birthday and then we did like a catamaran we did a bar crawl um we me and my husband did this like amazing afro panamanian cooking class we did a tour like i mean we've been doing more stuff and you know we see it like it wasn't it wasn't yesterday we went to the seafood market or the day before 
I had to be there before, right? Yeah, day before yesterday, we went to, like, the seafood market. Like, so, like, we're, we're definitely exploring more of Panama. And I think a lot of veterans down there. I believe it. Um, I think that um, another thing that we, we being humans, have a tendency to do is we sometimes, y'all, we really talk about countries like they're cities or states. And we have to... Oh, okay. Um, New York Reservoir, I'm $5. Listen, that's like the cheapest meal I've had here. Like, normally the food here has not been that inexpensive. Um, oh, hello, RAV4. I had a RAV4 in the States. Anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. I'm hot, y'all. I'm out of breath. I took my weave out the other day. So now, if my hair sweat, it just sweat. Nothing to be done. I actually packed a wig, but I haven't actually worn it yet i know because it's expensive down there yeah um oh yeah the whole the whole hit or miss thing so we ate at the seafood market the other day which like going to seafood markets to eat is actually a really popular thing to do here in um in um in panama i'm laughing at that sign up there y'all see like the chihuahuas um so like going to a seafood market is a pretty popular thing to do here and y'all don't need me to tell you especially y'all are in the states I mean, I think even outside of the city, seafood is like obviously typically more expensive than, you know, other types of food. And so we go to the seafood market and, um, there we go. We go to the seafood market and y'all, like we couldn't believe how cheap the food was. We got this bomb ass ceviche, Felipe, Jesus. We had this spot, <laughs> this delicious ass ceviche for $2.00 two dollars y'all thank you for sharing kelly and um i think my husband got like a whole fish and some plantains for like 12 14 dollars they had a whole y'all a king crab a king crab for like 45 dollars y'all the last time i had king crab i ain't talking about blue crab i ain't talking about alaska snow crab i'm talking about a king crab the last time that i had that was in um hilton head south carolina and it was 60 dollars for two legs two legs y'all and here you could get an entire king crab for 45 dollars. so at the end of the day um yeah like i, I mean like i said it, it's hit or miss like there are some things that i'm like oh um you know like it is it is kind of expensive but i feel like it's also one of those things where the more you get to know a country and the more places you go to that the locals and stuff recommend then the more you can get a better deal i like thailand seafood is good I eat a lot of delicious food in Thailand. I didn't eat that much seafood. Um, did we, eat a, we didn't really eat a lot of seafood in Thailand, did we? I know we ate some in Krabby, but yeah. We ate a lot of delicious food in Thailand. I do remember having that curry crab, which was really good. I do love, um, I love crabs. Like I ate crabs a lot growing up. I actually used to catch them because my family, I come from like a family of like fishing and crabbing and that kind of stuff. So like I ate a lot of crabs growing up, but then once I realized that you could get crab legs, I was like, oh fuck crabs. Just give me the legs, cause it's just a lot less work. Is this the park? Oh. Okay. Which country is more accepted to American immigrants so I can move there? Um I mean, I mean I'm in Panama right now and there are a ton of expats here. Um there's countries yeah, Thailand. Cause in Thailand, just they just um, they just updated their visa. Yeah, yeah. Where like they're actually letting them. They're not. I don't think it's just Americans, but they're letting um like tourists stay longer. You can definitely, you know, look up the. This is cool. I wonder if these lights come on, and I don't know if y'all can see the lights hanging from the tree. This is cool. We get a video, baby, so I can put this in my things to do in panama city video not of me just at a park okay thailand has the dtv now what's dtv you can stay is that what is the digital mm, yeah i don't know what that is what's dtv something tourist visa you can stay up to five years yeah so um you know do your research because there's so many places like that oh yeah also kenya we were supposed to be in kenya right now but let's not talk about it so um yeah, I mean, honestly, you have a lot of options. So we have reached the park 
and this is cute okay a little butterfly benches oh man i'm hot y'all this fan listen your girl don't leave a house without this fan it's like a digital nomad visa i've considered getting a digital nomad visa but i've been like in denial about even calling myself a digital nomad for so long i don't even really know why i just have not really loved that term but i guess at the end of the day that is what i am especially right now with the way that we are moving around and stuff so and i actually i don't even feel like comfortable calling myself like an expat because i feel like we move around so much and um we still haven't fully decided if we are going to at some point like go back to the u.s you would definitely qualify for it i believe it <laughs> i believe it but i assume you would have to do that like oh that's pretty you would have to do that for like specific countries <laughs> right it's not like a you just apply to be a digital nomad you can just take it anywhere that would be so convenient can you imagine that if you apply for a digital nomad visa and then you could just basically go anywhere digital nomad visas were accepted oh that would be so nice because y'all visas i'm gonna tell you right now that's that's one of the very i gotta get some games going out here um the visas that is the the unsexy part of travel that nobody want to talk about and funny enough i didn't even have to consider i didn't even have to think about visas until like my like 22nd country or something like that so just do your research yeah yeah vietnam was the first place where i really even had to think about a visa and man did we learn some lessons yes that would be lit pica fruta okay Ugh. go over there get you some little natural fruit I already didn't have me a maracuja juice today. Do y'all know what maracuja is? I'm, I am obsessed. I drink it all the time in Thailand. I drink it all the time here. Yeah, visas are annoying. Been in Thailand since February. The whole situation is annoying. Oh my God. Uh, we, yeah, we had to pay in Thailand for overstaying our visa. We were like two days behind. And then by the time... Like by the time we like went to the office to try to figure it out, the guy was basically like, because we were gonna pay for an extension, but we were also leaving in a few days, and the guy was basically like, at this point you might as well just leave and just pay the overstay fee. So that's what we did. How does de declaring U.S. taxes work living abroad? You know, a lot of people. She said, show the tennis courts. I don't think this is tennis. <laughs> um. Yeah, they're playing soccer. It's not tennis. But um, a lot of people ask me about taxes. And y'all, like, I'm still a U.S. citizen. Anything involving taxes, like, nothing has changed since I left the U.S. Like, I have filed my taxes virtually with an accountant who I've been going to for a few years. I've been doing that for years, and it doesn't change since I am traveling. Um, to my knowledge, you have to, if you stay in a country longer than 180 days, that's when you have to like, that's when you have to start worrying about taxes. So a lot of people will do like border runs where they'll just, you know, slide out of country for a few days and then come back. So like next year, for example, we're planning on choosing a place to stay at long term, long term as in like at least six months. But we know that, you know, we can't actually stay there for six months without leaving. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, we would still want to travel. Like, we're planning on going to West Africa in um, either March or April. So, regardless, we already got a trip planned. It's really cool traveling the world with your spouse. It is the most incredible thing in the world. I am very grateful. <laughs> do you work remotely or not working? Yes, I do. Um, I've actually been working remotely since 2018. And right now, I have a part-time project base maybe see that log over there i thought that was like a giant lizard told me they don't look like a giant lizard <laughs> yes it does um um <laughs> sorry i got distracted because i literally thought that log was a giant lizard um okay a lot of little kitties over here i'm happy i'm trying to record people kids though but anyway um i have a part-time project-based job that i'm doing sometimes i do it off and on i've been doing it for like three years have a 
I also am a like digital marketing entrepreneur. So um, most of my income comes from like digital marketing and affiliate marketing. And those are things that I talk about on my page as well, as far as, you know, having multiple streams of income and like how to make money from anywhere. But yeah, what's a bati though, baby? What you think that is a bati though? I mean, this is like a natural. <laughs> Yeah, but I wonder what kind of drink. See, y'all, look, that's what I mean about the prices, right? Like, look, you see this right here? Um, You see, so you can get, like, sausage on a stick for $1. You can get a burger for $3, a hot dog for $3, nachos. I don't really know what a batido is. I think it's just, maybe it's just, like, a frozen juice. Um, But, yeah, so, like I said, the prices are really hit or miss. It just depends on where you are. Like, you can definitely find places to get food and stuff for cheap but like me and my husband went to this place last weekend or over the weekend um called umami it was really cute it was like karaoke and stuff and i think we well, our bill was like what 50 dollars. he got a philly cheese day i thought it was, mm, it was 40 something 46. i think well with the tip and stuff i mean it was like 49 because that's what it said in the car statement um baby i think we're about to leave the park i mean oh okay um so yeah we um our bill was like fifty dollars, so like there is definitely some places you go when it's like place like prices in the U.S. When my friends were here from the U.S., y'all, that was the most money that I spent. Like out, well, maybe except Brazil, where there was a lot of partying in Brazil. Um, but like that was the that was the most amount of money I have spent in months since traveling because you know, you know that's how it is. You know, you leave America and you come somewhere for like you know five six days. You know, you drop in a thousand dollars, and it's so funny because me and my husband were talking about how like that life seems so crazy to us now and we used to do the same thing like we would go on trips five days you know six days um you know whatever and you know you spend all this money but it's like now because we've been traveling because we've been living abroad and we have been um we have been you know like balling out on a budget essentially and you know seeing <laughs> Like, watching my sisters and them come here and they're just spending, like, $60 a piece on a meal. Like, and I'm talking, like, multiple times in a day. And I'm like, baby, can you say, um, can you say that, um, yeah, my perspective has changed. I don't know anything about or insects. Is this the Chase Glitch group? I have no idea what that is. Are people expecting to English? Do you need to learn the native language? Kevin, um... People speak English all over the world for sure. I think depending on not only the country, but also that's a beautiful tree. Not only this park is massive. Goodness. Um, but depending on not just the country, but what part of the country you're in, um, people like might speak more or less English. Like I remember being shocked at how many people spoke English whenever we were in Vietnam. But, you know, we were in Hanoi, which is the capital city so that's also something else to keep in mind right if you go to a country and you go to one of the major cities you're going to find people who are more like bilingual right it's like the same in the u.s if you go to like new york you're gonna find a lot more diversity in terms of like y'all hear how out of breath i am y'all got me on here <sighs> sounding oh <sighs> tired as hell because all these damn inclines out here but yeah um it has not been a big deal for us. I would say if you are going to stay somewhere, probably for longer than a month. I mean, honestly, if you're going to stay for a month, you're going to go back home. I personally think that it is still worth it to um, learn at least the basic stuff. Huh, baby? Yeah. Um, but for us, we haven't because what I've learned is like I end up going to the next country saying shit from the last country so honestly i mostly learned like hello goodbye and thank you um most of the other stuff i just like i get i'm i'm fine with english and google translate yeah i don't know about no indoor ins indoor, <laughs> indoor insects maria we are in panama right now i just find out for myself i save money when i travel overseas oh yeah did you go to danong i wish um i that honestly that is a regret that i have about vietnam is that we were only in hanoi we did like ninh Binh, but i don't really feel like that counts um baby will you get a video of this part um 
but yeah we we have already said that when we go back to vietnam we are going to visit some um some different parts what you talking about thailand no i mean when we go back to vietnam <laughs> we are going to go to different parts because i would like to see some of uh, saigon or ho chi Minh, and then also da nang because i heard da nang is like really beautiful so yeah Maybe we don't need to get on here because it's too many people walking that's and right, shit. Yeah, that's Yeah, that's nice if you and this is too far for um I mean it was like a on Google it said it was like an 18 minute walk, but it took us more like 22 minutes to get here, which isn't horrible. Oh, what's that? What's one what are those little green things? Let me see it. Huh. I don't know what this is. Why'd you take it off the tree? Wow. Let me see. It's white on the inside. Huh. I don't, it, it smells like a, mm, it definitely does. It's definitely not ripe, whatever it is. It smells like a, it smells like a tree. It don't smell fruity at all to me. It smells, it smells straight up like grass to me. What other travel questions do y'all got for me? So I was wondering, so it normally gets dark around 6.30. It's actually 6.12 right now. But my husband said that this park closes at 10. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, I wonder how it is out here at night. Like, if it's like a lot of people or is it normally, I mean, this is actually not a lot of people anyway, probably because it's a Monday. Um, somebody asked me what I was doing for Labor Day, y'all. I completely forgot about Labor Day. The same thing happened to me with Memorial Day. Like, when I tell you I am so out of touch with U.S. holidays now, <laughs> I mean, obviously, something like Christmas or whatever, yeah. But, like, other than that, like, I am, and especially, like, not having, like, a full-time job anymore. Like, I am so out of touch with U.S. holidays. How is the healthcare system in Panama? I would not know because it ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> we, um, we use travel insurance. You said what? Mel said that somebody said the health insurance here was really good, but I don't know because we just use travel insurance. But I mean, there are, there are um, a ton of, like I said before, there are a ton of expats here and a lot of them talk about how good the healthcare is here. So yeah, I mean, like I said, now do take mine. What I said earlier, a lot of the expats here are retirement age. So I ain't gonna lie. We came here thinking we was gonna meet up with a lot of other millennials and you know be hanging out and stuff and no exaggeration the expats are like mostly twice our age and older so we were kind of like oh um that's actually the first time that's like ever happened to us and we've been in a lot of black expat groups and there's normally like more diversity with the ages um but here it has definitely been like primarily um people who are retirement age I went to Greece last month. How was it, Glenn? I have never been to Greece. Greece is actually not on my list of places I want to visit, but it looks beautiful. Um, I know the people who I do know have gone there, they have said that it was beautiful, so I need to be there. Lynn, do you mean you need to be in Panama because of the retirement age? Is that what you mean? Yeah, Thank y'all for the hearts. It's very easy to get like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's true. It's very easy to do. But some countries when you retire, you have you can retire, you can retire in those countries and stuff. Um, yeah. So one of the visa requirements for Panama was you supposedly had to. Yes, I am sixty four. But yeah, this would be a good place. Um, if you want to come to a country where there's already a lot of other like expats and stuff. But um, so the visa requirements for Panama, one of them is that you have to have $500 in the bank. And um, they didn't check for me, but my point is there are some visa stipulations and you had to have a return flight, which I did not have, but we had fake return flights. <laughs> so there's that go now while you're young and healthy. Go where, who are you, who are you talking to? Yeah, who they were talking to specifically. Oh my god y'all it's like it's not like hot out here it's actually kind of nice um yeah it's just so 
humid. How's my hair? Small. <laughs> the shrinkage is shrinkage in it. Oh, I kind of bust my wig out. But my problem is I would be so fucking hot in that wig. I would just have an attitude. Where do you live now? We don't really live anywhere, but we are currently in Panama. You have to have a return flight. Yes, but they did not check. And I did post in the group and like some of the expat groups and ask if they were strict about that. And I basically got different answers. A lot of people said that um, a lot of people said that they did check for them. They did not check that they, they basically asked me. They were like, when are you returning? But I didn't actually have to prove anything, but I was ready to with my little fake return flight. Um, but yeah, technically for Panama, um, if you're just coming on like a regular tourist visa for like, I think um, you do have to have a return flight. Go everywhere you want to go and do all you while you can. Listen, Carter's, we on the same page. That's why we out here. That is why we out here. Y'all think that this was just like a walk in the park for us ha see what i did there walking in the park right now but no for real y'all think this was just like a walk in the park like i mean deciding to leave a country that you have lived in your entire life deciding to like you know leave like your family and friends like it's not a small decision like it's really not but you know for us it really just got to a point where oh hold on do you need a visa for panama um, you can, if you're just coming for like to visit, you automatically can get like the one for 180 days, just a regular tourist visa. Um, the, oh shit, the fake return flight. Oh my God. Ciao. I'm not going to lie to you. I do not remember what the hell that website is called. If you DM me, I'll send it to you. But right now I do not remember what the website is called. Somebody here told me about it. Um, but basically like you can pay like 15 or $30 to book a fake return flight. So yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> um, but I can't, I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a video on it too. But right now I cannot remember what the hell that thing is called. Is it easy a short term apartment? Um, I don't, I mean, if you use like Airbnb or something, yeah. Um, Airbnb, booking.com, Verbo, something like that. Then yes, it is. Um, but yeah, you know, like, huh? So you wanna walk up on it or come back? We didn't go this way, baby. Did we, did we go this way? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, we can. That's fine. Um, it's an onward ticket. Yeah. Do you know what it's called? The website? Because I cannot, I cannot remember. But yeah, you know, that's why we decided to leave. Like we were tired of just kind of living that life in the U.S. where I felt like all we did was like, it was like the life of like, okay, you just like work, pay bills and die. More out of life. We wanted to be in a place that was more affordable. We wanted to be in a place where the food wasn't poisoning us. And yeah, we decided to make the move. Please be knowledgeable about the healthcare systems and the places you visit. I will take note. I'm wondering what you do for work. I'm Puerto Rican. I speak, read, and write in Spanish. So I have a part time. Baby, this is just a track. Oh, that's, that's a, that's, that was the end of it. Yeah. I have a part time project based remote job that I've been doing off and on for the last three years. And then I also do digital marketing and affiliate i have multiple streams of income there's actually um hey stella we're in panama city right now lynn um y'all better be getting a little workout on see this is where i need to be i'm getting my workout in right now shit where am i at let's see for, been walking 44 minutes 44 minutes 1.55 miles baby you ready or are you just trying to like hang out you said what I can't hear you. Okay, I was waiting for uh, for them to like to come on so I get a video about. Oh, that. okay, we can. You want a video like when it's actually dark? Oh, okay. I know, but I'm saying it's gonna look different in the dark. Like I'm saying, if you wanted to wait until it actually got dark out here. I don't love this. You can get if you do get hungry, get a little snack out here. Thank you, Stella. Yeah. So they have like lights out here that come on whenever it gets dark, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I have a video pinned on my page where it walks through all 10 of my income streams. Like one of the things that I always teach is the importance of having multiple streams of income because y'all it's 2024. Like there is, there's just way too many ways that you can make money 
from your cell phone to have one stream of income that's like number one is like at this point like sorry not sorry like nobody people nobody really just don't got no excuse to only have one stream of income in 2024 because there's too many simple things that you can do to be earning more money and i mean yeah it can be something like an online business or you know whatever but it doesn't even have to be that deep um stella i've never been to korea <laughs> we were in asia before but not korea we were in it was probably in thailand because that's where we were the longest but yeah um there's just too many ways that you can be earning money to only have one stream of income number one number two a lot of us and i know because i was this and this used to be me as well um a lot of us yeah i had a feeling it was thailand that one stream of income is a job and y'all that's even crazier because like these jobs like they don't really don't give a fuck about us they will they will drop you when it is convenient i listen i've been there y'all was laid off when i was 23 my first job out of college i was laid off i couldn't believe it i'd only heard about people being laid off on tv and they were always people who were in like their 40s and 50s and shit like i could not believe it i was laid off i was fired and i had to quit a job because of the toxic work environment for and this was all in like a three-year period y'all this is all me in like my early mid-20s like i was like what the fuck so like back in 20 back in like 2018 i was like i gotta get serious because in like those moments where it was those moments where I was, you know, like fired, laid off, you know, whatever and had to quit. I realized that like, even though my other streams of income weren't necessarily making me the money that I was getting from my full time job, like they helped a lot whenever I was no longer bringing in those full time, those full time paychecks. And then on top of all of that, y'all, then and I'm, I'm talking to y'all in, in the United States. I can't talk about no other country, but I'm talking about y'all in the U.S. It is fucking crazy expensive in the U.S. right now. I'll tell you the name of the park after I leave. I don't be dropping my location when I'm there because people are crazy. Um, but yeah, like, y'all, the U.S. is so expensive right now. Like, the amount the amount of people who I see and hear, you know, talking about how, um, you know, like, how expensive groceries are and how much it costs to put gas in a car and how, you know, you can't go outside without spending $100. Like, first of all, I hope y'all don't think that's instant. That's like... I hope y'all don't think that's an accident because that's intentional. And second of all, um, it's terrible right now. Stella, I know, because we were in the States in July and we were just stunned. Like, we were literally like, people talking about hanging, hanging out. Bitch, you better come over here and bring some goddamn cards. You better come over here and play some spades. You talking about going to the club and getting turned up. Bitch, you better go to the liquor store. We better take this shit back to college. We are pre-gaming. We getting drunk in the house before we go out drinks are $15 and up now watered down drinks are $15 and up now like it ain't no fucking way and like I said like one stream of income is crazy and back in 2018 I decided like enough is enough like Bianca you gotta look out for yourself like by that time um how many days is the automatic girl what you talking about oh like in 2018, I decided like enough is enough. Like Bianca, ain't nobody gonna look out for you, but you. Like that's really what I had to tell myself. I need a job on my phone. Any, listen, there's so many different ways to be earning income. At the videos that I have on my page, like I said, I have a video where I go through all my streams of income and um, visa for Panama, 180 days. Um, oh, excuse me. Also in my bio, I have what is called the cash flow come up checklist. It is a guide that I created and there are more than 20 different, no problem. There are more than 20 different income streams and side hustles that anybody can do. Look how beautiful these leaves are. I had a plant like this at home, a Monstera. His name is James. What anyway. Um, grow up Melvin <laughs> um but yeah in my bio I have a guide it's called the cash flow come up checklist and even though I talk about travel and like obviously that's like my niche my main thing I created that guide because so many people would ask me like how do you afford to travel how do you make money while you're traveling and everybody is like I need a remote job I need a remote job and at the end of the day y'all I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a remote job like I mean hell I have what 
um like i get it like i mean i have like a part-time remote job but if you have been following me and if you haven't hit that follow button but like if you've been following me you also know that i'm on a journey to permanently leave the corporate world grateful for the job i have now but i'm working on my income streams on growing them expanding them scaling them so that i don't have to depend on a job for money thank y'all for the hearts because y'all like life is too short like that's why we here like, that's why me and my husband left the country we were like life is too short to be out here in a job you hate and that's the shit they be killing me it's like we be out here struggling we be out here busting our asses working 40 50 60 70 hours a week at jobs that don't even pay us enough he got me fucked up i ain't walking up there um like jobs that literally don't they don't even pay you enough like make it make sense like jobs where like you're afraid to even take off you're afraid to even use your pto like honestly like it's not life it's just y'all it's not life it's, it's really not you have to at some point you have to get to a point where you realize that if you want something different, you gotta do something different. You gotta become somebody different. I feel like there's not enough people talking about the person that you have to become if you really, how was it? Oh, okay. Um, like you, there's not enough people talking about the person that you have to become if you really want a different life you can have all the tips and i tell people all the time people be asking me all these questions about travel i'm like y'all there is so much free information out there about travel are you gonna book the fucking flight or not is the question there's so much information out there about digital marketing and making money online and passive income what the fuck are you gonna do what action are you going to take like at the end of the day at the end of the day like that is really what is going to make the difference and that's a mindset shit that I, mindset shit <laughs> can i coin that term mindset shit <laughs> that is a mindset shift that you have to have there's so much unlearning to do stella like ten thousand percent there's so much unlearning to do and you can either spend your time complaining about how messed up the world is and you can blame everybody and a baby mama and it ain't gonna change nothing until you decide to actually take action like until you decide to do something until you decide to step into a different version of you it's not gonna matter you can talk all the shit you want you can blame it on the government and the president and the country and your mama and your baby daddy and all the things and none of it will fucking matter until you start holding yourself accountable people look at things like accountability as a bad thing but the reality is y'all accountability is so beautiful because we are such powerful creators and the thing is once you realize that your life is in your hands once you realize that wherever you are in life it is 100 percent because of you that is that is so empowering because then you realize that you also have the power to change y'all i lived abroad in 2019 y'all it's 2024 it took me five years to get back here five years y'all but guess what the time passed anyway the time literally passed anyway stop being scared like people are like we we literally are more afraid of the over here it's this way we are more don't we gotta walk this way we are more afraid of the unknown than we are of staying in the same place so what exactly is it that you do for income? Blackberry, I have a part-time um, project-based job and I also am an entrepreneur with the multiple streams of income. Most of my income from entrepreneurship comes from digital marketing and affiliate marketing, which I talk about on my page in terms of like different ways that you can make money from all over the world. Um, excuse me, digital marketing and affiliate marketing are probably like my favorite ways to make money online because like they're so simple. Anybody can start, you don't need a degree, a bunch of money you can like you can literally start earning like we spending all this time on social media scrolling and scrolling and scrolling looking at everybody and their baby mama doing all the things and you know making all the money but like y'all these apps will pay you these apps will pay you and you don't even got to be doing what i'm doing you don't got to go live i know they're like some of y'all you know more introverted listen i'm married to an introvert i get it like this 
the stuff that I'm doing, the stuff that I do, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I'm saying there is something for you. There is a way that you can start earning more money. And whether you need to start slow, whether you're like, you know what, I just need an extra couple hundred dollars a month right now, or I need a, bless you, baby, I need a couple, an extra couple hundred dollars a week, a month, a day. There is something that you can start doing. I cannot count, y'all, I can't count on two hands. How many side hustles, how many, how many things I have tried and failed at in business? Y'all, so many things. And just last year is when I really got my groove and started like really making consistent money. And that's why I created the cash flow come up checklist so I can show y'all how to do it too. Like I said, there's something. Yeah, we really not. Like I said, there is something for everybody. Go to my get the cash flow come up checklist. Like I said, more than 20 different income streams in that guide that anybody can do. I'm talking whether you, y'all about to see me sweaty as hell. Y'all see how much my hair done shrink since I left the house. I'm talking whether you have more time than money, if you have more money than time, if you're an introvert, extrovert, if you are ready to start something now that can make you a couple thousand dollars a month, if, you, if you're like, you know what, I just got to ease into it, there is something in the guide for you. Because whenever I created the cash flow come up checklist, I literally was like, Bianca, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who is like, make more money and I don't know where to start. And here's what I want y'all to understand. And this doesn't just apply to money, but right now we're talking about money. Y'all, the habit is more important than the amount. Some of y'all are so scared to start small. Some of y'all hear these people out here talking about they made $10,000 last month, but you don't even make $10,000 in three months. Like, start where the fuck you are. Like, y'all, y'all know how happy I was when I made my first $40 from affiliate marketing? Y'all, I, y'all, I almost cried. I literally almost cried because I could not believe how empowering it felt to know that me, as a regular ass human, y'all, I grew up black and broke in fucking North Carolina. Like, who am I? Like, who am I? You, what, you, think, you think I had privileges growing up in America? No, I didn't. Like, I'm not doing nothing that y'all can't do. Like I said, I created the cash flow come up checklist to show you how you can start earning more money. You can start where you are. It comes with a video where I walk you through all the stuff. I, look, I'm very honest. I tell you about the side hustles that I've done. I tell you about things that I would recommend if you want to build a brand. I talk about the things that I recommend if you want to be a little bit more low key. If you need to start small, like, there's something in there for you because what matters to me is whenever people reach out to me and they're like, Bianca, I'm not making more money because of you. Hey, Bianca, I made an extra hundred dollars this week and that really helped me out with groceries. Bianca, I, I started this business a while ago, but I quit. But because of you and your knowledge, I started back up again. Like this is the shit that matters to me. Like at the end of the day, I'm just here to empower y'all. Like I go live for y'all. I don't go live for me. Like people find it's hard to believe, but like y'all before I started doing like social media and stuff for business, I was a very, very private person like I was not I was not somebody who was like always posting where I was at like Instagram is actually where I have like my personal profile people be like Bianca where you at we haven't seen you in the stories I don't even be posting up there like I literally share this and all this behind the scenes stuff because I want to be able to drop the knowledge like I want to be a resource for people who are serious people who want to live a purposeful life people who want to live they, they want to thrive and not just survive like I said, that's why we left. Where's the link to the checklist? It's in my bio, Stella. Um, it's under, there's a category. It says make more money for travel. Um, it's called the cash flow come up checklist. And there's a, y'all, there's side hustles and income streams in there. And there is an introduction to affiliate marketing and digital marketing. Like, even if you want to know like the stuff that I do specifically, like there's an intro to that in there as well. Like y'all take action. That's really, that, that really is the main thing. Like I said, like you just, you got to be willing to do something you haven't done before. Otherwise, how are you going to live a life you've never lived? How can you keep doing the same shit and expect a different life? This is a conversation that I had to have with myself. I had to get to where I was fed up with my own bullshit. I'm not out here living abroad because I'm lucky. This is a life that I have been creating for years, y'all. Years. And when I first started traveling, it was like cruises and resorts. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can start where you are. There is a way that you can start traveling right now. I have a completely free travel guide in my bio. If you see all these people online and you like, damn, everybody always out here traveling. I want to travel, but it feels too big. It feels too overwhelming. I don't even know where to go. I don't even know where to start. Get my free travel guide. Y'all, the world is too big to stay in one space. The world is too big. 
Get your ass out and see the world. Get immersed in another culture. Go see somebody other than your dusty ass baby daddy. Get the fuck out of your hometown. What you still there for? Why are you still there? Leave. Y'all, I'm getting to the point where your biggest fear is missing out on living while you're alive. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of not living. I'm afraid again to the end of my life and then recognizing that I didn't do anything that mattered. That I didn't live the way I wanted to live. That I was a fucking slave to a nine to five job. That's the shit that scares me. I'm 31 years old. I'm afraid of being 40 years old and still having trauma from the Microsoft team sound. That's what I'm afraid of. It's a mindset shift. And I feel like that's what a lot of travel creators are not talking about. Like I said, y'all, y'all can look up all the travel tips in the world. But if you're not there mentally, you ain't going nowhere. Like you're, you're not. I went to seven different countries last year. And you know why? It's because at the beginning of last year, what I said to myself was, Bianca, how many countries are you going to visit this year? Which countries are you going to visit this year? Before that, oh, well, I hope I can go somewhere this year when I get my taxes. Well, I hope I can take a trip this year. I really want to take it. No, I shifted my mindset from I hope, I wish to I'm going to how many to when is the date? I'm telling y'all, that's the missing piece. All right, I'm turning this back around. Oh my God, I'm so depressed about my hair. It is what it is. <laughs> I done lost an earring back out here. Jesus. Earring backs just ain't what they used to. It's not what they used to. Checklist, please. Kathy, it's in the bio. If you go to my bio, um, it's called the cash flow come up checklist. Um, it says something about like side hustles and income streams. It is in my bio, y'all. Grab it. It's a $9 it's a nine dollar investment to show you how you can literally start making more money today asap and listen y'all please understand that i create a lot of oh shit i create a lot of resources i have the free travel guide i have the cash flow come up checklist i have a mover buy guide like i create a lot of resources and i create resources that what i what i like to call are living resources and what i mean by that is tiktok why are you being good There we go. And what I mean by that is, like, for example, you're getting a cash flow come up checklist. That's great. But listen, don't do not do not go to my bio and get the checklist. If you are just going to go read through it one time and you're just going to like toss it to the side, you've already done that enough. You have already downloaded and purchased and saved all the videos and not done a motherfucking thing. Do not only get the cash flow come up checklist if you are ready to study that motherfucker if you are ready to go into it and watch the y'all there's a video that comes with it do not skip the video do not skip the video because i walk you through the guide i walk you through the checklist i talk to you about the different income streams i tell you about the side hustles that i've tried i give you my honest recommendations and there's going to be some things in there that you're going to get so excited about that you can start today and there's going to be some things that you're going to get excited about you're going to be like damn i want to do that but i can't do that right now that's fine start where you are the habit is more important than the amount. Start getting into the habit of learning how to make income from yourself. Getting into the habit of not depending on a job for money, not depending on somebody else. Get into the habit of that extremely empowering feeling of bringing in money for yourself. Start where you are. Pick one or two things that you can do from the guide in the next week or two and chill. Chill. Get used to that, whatever you decide. And then come back in a few weeks, come back in a few months, like whatever the timing is. But the point is, there is something in that checklist that can make you money. But just y'all don't get it if you're not going to take action. That's all I'm saying. Like, don't I don't I don't care. Like, it don't make me no difference. Like, do not get it unless you are going to take action. That's what matters, y'all. Like I said, these travel creators, they over here telling you, oh, here's all the things you can do in Thailand. Spend the day with me in this country. Oh, here's a travel tip for how to get cheap flights. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that stuff. How I post that stuff too. But like, what about the mindset from, oh, can I afford to travel to where am I going this year? What about the person that you have to become if you want to start making travel a priority in your life? 
like people say like how did you travel so much y'all i'm not even kidding i'm not trying to say this to brag i've gotten to the point where i'm like how do you not how do you not travel people out here talk about they want to travel you even got a passport make it make sense you're not even like how are you even going to take yourself seriously talking about you want to go somewhere you ain't even got a passport and for what i hear passports taking a lot longer so i'm telling you get that shit sooner rather than later y'all we're going straight right look at um kfc over there when i tell y'all it don't matter what country i'm in it's gonna be a motherfucking kfc okay <laughs> and then there is subway subway Domino's over there I'm off my soapbox y'all y'all can keep dropping y'all travel questions <laughs> what other questions y'all got for me what you want to know to Panama you going for um you celebrating something you just traveling what's happening in Panama for you oh my god I got a cramp. Did I miss any comments? Where are you guys now? We're in Panama, Heather. What do you work? Love. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. Digital marketing. Affiliate marketing. A long time. Um, a part-time remote job. Solo travel. Yes, Nia. I'm here for it. We did this afro Panamanian um, cooking class. Wait, have you booked anything yet, Nia? Because, girl, listen. That cooking class first of all it was just fun as hell but when i tell you that food was so good and there are wait yet do you have anything planned because also like the catamaran cha panama been a vibe what was the first country you went to when you decided to live abroad so the the first time i lived abroad was back in remote year, playlist on remote year and i did four months in latin america so i did chile peru colombia and mexico and that was the first time that i really experienced slow travel that was the first time i really experienced what it was like to truly be immersed in a culture and not just you know go somewhere for like three days and come back home or to really like live um catamaran is playing and a bar crawl let's get it nia if you can do the afro Amer the afro panamanian cooking class too because i think it's so fun um it's on v8 or there's actually a link in my bio if you scroll to the bottom it says my favorite my favorite experiences and i have the, the cooking class and there's two of them do the afro panamanian one if you can the catamaran is so fun i think about doing that shit again you're gonna love it taboga island is absolutely beautiful you are welcome i hope you have a great time we met we, yeah we met another solo traveler from dc whenever we actually wasn't jason a solo traveler too the guy from trinidad never mind <laughs> yeah the cooking class that we did we actually did it with two other solo travelers oh, yeah. cake fit i remember that place <laughs> look <laughs> no sugar no gluten no lactose and keto yeah i was looking up desserts I'm trying to figure out why the fuck a slice of cake was ten dollars i was like what the fuck and i looked at keto i said first of all first of all you got me fucked up because i don't need sugar in my cake and second of all you got me fucked up but you think i'm paying ten dollars for a slice of cake oh my burger uh-uh why, why that don't be popping up on uber eats uh, -uh baby hold on what does that say lunch for how much Hold on, baby, because I might be here for lunch tomorrow. Lunch for, does that say $6.99 or $8.99? I cannot. That says $6.99. Baby, can you take a picture of that place? Because don't play, because Bianca will come back. Ooh, I'm hot. How long you've been there? We've been here four weeks, Nia. Ooh, y'all, we almost had 70 minutes on this walk. 2.4 miles. Ooh, we burning these calories today. Yeah, we've been in Panama for four weeks. We really, we really didn't even start doing shit until like the third week that we were here. But that's another thing I appreciate about slow travel, y'all, is like coming to a place and not having to rush. And again, you know, like I said, start where you are. If right now what's possible for you is a three day, four day trip, then do that. Like don't, don't not travel because of that. But you know, what I would say is really think about working your way up to slow travel um love um remote year 
I don't know if y'all heard of Remote Year, but it's a work travel company. The easiest way to think about Remote Year is that you bring the job and they bring everything else. So like they provide accommodations, they provide activities, you have a community, you have like a person, a city manager who is like gonna be on the ground and you know, there to answer any of your questions. And like if you, for example, like I know there are a lot of people that are intimidated by solo travel. So like if you want to travel, but you feel like you don't have anybody to go with or you wanna do slow travel, but you don't wanna have to do all the planning, let's definitely look into remote year um i've traveled with them three different times i did a i forgot i just let him pass um i did a four month program back in 2019 i did a one month in february in brazil and then i did a one month in march in vietnam so i've traveled with remote year three times and like i said i have plenty of videos about remote year on my page also i have like a full faq video in my bio um, it's a it's a YouTube video. It says like it says like R Y F A Qs or something like that. If you want to learn more about traveling with Remote Year, because it really is an eye opening experience, and you just you make friends for life, y'all. Like we traveled in Brazil in February. Like we still have a group chat with like some of the people that we met. We're already talking about meeting up again in um, South Africa in December. And I went to Egypt last year with my Egyptian friend who I met back in 2019 in like Remote Year. Oh my God. Oh, them chemicals are chemical and good boy. Got a bitch about to pass out over here. Oh, right. Anyway, y'all, I am about to wrap up this live because we are getting close to the house. But per the usual, hit that follow button if you have not already. If you want more things on travel, living abroad, making money from anywhere in the world hit that follow button get my free travel guide if you want to travel and you are a travel newbie travel beginner and you're like where do i even start get the free travel guide in my bio if you want to make more money get the cash flow come up checklist i got hella resources y'all and you know just go on my page i got i've been doing this for some time now so i got hella videos um all good things thank you for sharing the live oh jesus Y'all, I am so out of breath. Go straight. Okay. All right, y'all. After I cross the street, I'm about to wrap this up. Uh, I'm just going to go. There we go. Um, all right. Thank y'all again for joining. Keep the travel questions coming because I'm going to definitely be back. And I'm going to catch y'all next time. Robert, I'm hopping off, but I'm currently in Panama. <laughs> but I'll see y'all next time.